Oh, ho, 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 ho. on launch control. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, it's Carl. So in very sunny Barcelona right now, perhaps testing one of the cooler EVs that I've ever done. And I'm in the market right now for something practical, something wagon-like. Obviously EV is that next chapter. Something that I can take Link, my doggo in, something obviously that the wifey can fit in, and just something that is a bit cool, a bit special. So this is the Hyundai Ionic 5N. So I'm a big fan of the classic Ionic 5. This has received their N treatment. So essentially N is their motorsport line. Uh, I think we all know that uh, Dr. Bierhoff was swiped over from BMW. He has brought over that styling. This thing looks next level. So to the colors first, this is in performance blue. It's kind of this matte light blue, really reminds me of a golf blue. And they also have a Soultronic orange. I know that I'm a big orange fan, but I would probably lean to this. It still has some of those little bits accenting in that orange. Uh, I guess it's a bit of like a two-tone. They've taken the Ionic 5 and just created almost like a race car out of it. So there's a lot of aggressive air on it. In the front, you have that active flap that actually helps cool the battery. And you do also have these vents to help cool the brakes. All of them, once again, very very usable. We've got the larger wheel arches, which gives it a bit of a beefier stance and uh, 21 inch rims kind of all around. It's got a rear spoiler for downforce and even the third brake light is uh, inspired by F1 to give it a bit of a sportier look. And honestly, I was pretty surprised with how good it looked. Like I said, I've been a fan of the Ionic 5, which actually there's one rolling right here. Turn around. That's just the standard Ionic 5 and it has that robotic, you know, futuristic look that I think Hyundai has really kind of adopted, which I'm a fan of, and just take that look and just made it a bit sportier. So to the numbers, uh, zero to 60 or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.4 seconds, you've got an 84 kilowatt battery. You can get from 10 to 80% in just around 18 minutes, obviously, if you have the fastest charger. Torque wise, 740 Newton meters, 601 horsepower. There's also a little extra boost button, which you can use every 10 seconds. That gets you an extra 40 horsepower for 10 seconds. It's a heavy boy though, 2200 kilograms. But uh, if we take a closer look, like I said, fully usable space where Link can go in the back. In the back, still room for the head and ample room for the knees. I could actually stretch this out a bit further. This isn't even pushed all the way up. Fully usable trunk. We've just been using it to haul around the camera gear. Obviously that's gonna be the grocery hauler, all the big stuff in the back. You can obviously knock down the seats, but unfortunately no usable frunk as that's just filled with uh, actual equipment. Okay, to the interior, and I think this is a bit of a driver's delight as well. So inside we have zero, like when I say zero, zero black piano plastics to collect any fingerprints. We actually have tactile buttons on the dash that you can press, barely any capacitive buttons. The only thing that would collect fingerprints potentially is the screen, and it's not overdone. I think you've seen a lot of EVs, there are screens everywhere. Obviously you've got the digital tachometer, digital dash that kind of extends halfway through the car, but everything else, kind of is in the place that would make sense. You have large spots for charging, big cup holders in the middle console, and we've got these nice comfy buckets. They're not overbearing, not too rounded, but also uh, not too soft. So great for when we get uh, to the track. Maybe you've got some of the, um, the race flag, like the checkered flag on some of the badging. You actually have that on the uh, pedals as well to give you that emulation that you're gonna get in first place. But steering wheel in the right place, it feels solid. Once again, some of that uh, alternative stitching. We've got the different drive modes, which I'll get to in a second. You've got this little orange NGB button, which activates the regenerative boost. And that's what these little paddles are for. So you can kind of select that between one and three. I'll do that a bit more on track, but it's nice to have some interaction. But maybe the coolest feature of this car has to be the N mode button when you select or when you actually hit that you can get if you can actually hear that that emulates a seven-speed ICE car and once again you can use the paddles so as I downshift and obviously with an electric car you typically just have the one gear you have none of that torquiness or a little jerky motion when you switch between the gears. This actually gives you that. So if I downshift, 
Little snap, crackles, and pops. Oh, that's a red line. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. And typically, when you think of an EV, if I can just turn that off for a second so I can actually hear, or you guys can actually hear, that one thing that EVs lack is that bit of soul, is the bit of you know interaction with the car that when you have an ICE, when you have like a, you know, a six speed manual, when you have a clutch, when you're shifting through gears, that's what people love. And I think that's what enthusiasts kind of miss when they switch to cars like this. This is probably the first time I've been in an EV where I've kind of grinned. So as I press the button on again, <laughs> You can hear the bits of crackle. Obviously, it's fake. It's coming through the speaker. You actually have speakers on the outside as well. But um, it gives you that enjoyment, which I think a lot of the time you miss with these cars. And when you go into end mode, you can actually switch the different sounds and you can actually see this little uh, red line meter or the shift meter on the heads up display, obviously in the front dash. One thing that I've noticed, it is a bit dark in the interior. That's because no moonroof or sunroof. That's uh, just for weight savings. Unfortunately though, it is just a uh, regular body. It's not carbon fiber. If you want to save some weight, give us some carbon fiber. I think we'd all appreciate that. And I think it would look really good uh, on this uh, performance wood. <laughs> On launch control. Oh my goodness. Oh. That was zero to 60 in uh, just uh, over uh, three seconds. And it's funny, when you think about this, this is a 2200 kilogram car. It doesn't feel that heavy. When you drive an EV around a track, it feels like a big boy. And this is technically heavy, but it feels surprisingly, oh, as we go around this corner, surprisingly light. Okay, so as we pull back into pit lane, who is this car for? This is a tough one. So obviously someone that wants that performance, that wants to push it, that wants to have a bit of fun. Maybe someone that's coming from a combustion engine that, uh, you know, they're taking their first step. They've been kind of on the fence with EV, you know, myself included. I've never been the biggest fan. You kind of just don't have that soul with an EV car. This might have been the closest drive to some sort of combustion car. All it needed is a, you know, a stick shift, a six speed in the middle, but at least you get that torque feeling. You get some sort of sound. I know it's fake, you know it's fake, but uh, at least you get some feedback, which I think is part of the battle. Biggest sticking point here, I think, uh, has to be the price. So it's around uh, 78,000 Canadian, maybe what is that, 60,000 US. If you're looking for something comparable for the performance, you're paying over $100,000. Something from BMW, Mercedes, Audi, they're pricey too. Would I take this or say a used EV, which have absolutely plummeted in value? If you look at, uh, you know, a Taycan, something two, three years old, you can get them for half off, like two thirds off, which is also crazy. I gotta give props to Hyundai. They're not afraid to push the envelope to change the design of this. You know, it feels like it's from the future, but it isn't, you know, overdone. It isn't tacky. I'm standing here in the pit and, you know, next door is all the end performance parts. I almost feel like I'm in an M power section. Uh, you know, that's the kind of feel that I get. And I honestly wish BMWs looked this good because uh, they honestly have just gotten so ugly lately. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I still don't know what to classify this is. It's not a crossover like the standard Ionic 5. It's lower, it's sportier. Is it a hot hatch? It's got that supercar performance. It uh, doesn't look like a supercar, but, um, and it has the usability, like I said, you can throw things in the back. I'm narrowing down my choice till I find that next uh, fully usable utility vehicle. Um, it will be in the new house since I do have charging ports. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I certainly had a grin on my face and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones.